All right, so I want to do a quick lesson in how I first started in uh, in sort of looking at changes and stuff, and this is really aimed at people that um, don't, you know, they're just getting into this kind of thing, just playing over, you know, unrelated chords and, and stuff that has, you know, you can't just pick one scale and go for it sort of thing. Um, and this this will open up all sorts of doors. You might already do this, but if you don't, then listen up. So, uh, what we're going to do is take four chords that are unrelated, four minor seven chords. So you got A minor seven, C minor seven, E flat minor seven, and then F sharp minor seven. And then what you do is you lock off a part of the fretboard. So we're just going to stick within these five or six frets. Because uh, the temptation is when you start, is if you have this. It should be around this area. And then, you, you know, you'd end up sort of doing this. Uh, you know, that's... You know, there's nothing wrong with that, I started doing that. So, what you do is, you lock off this area, and then first off, first off, the first thing you do is you play the arpeggio of the chord. So you don't do the scale first because this will help you think in, in chord tones rather than scales. Um, there's nothing wrong with scales, it's just I think people get too hung up on oh you know I'll learn this scale now or I'll learn that scale and then there's, there's other things to, to be looking at. So so if we're going A minor, A minor 7, you got root, flat 3, 5, flat 7 and then root. Then carry on. And then you can add the ninth in as well. So instantly I think that sounds more musical than or. So that's what you do for that. So the A minor you've got. So all your chord tones. The thing is if you stack all the chord tones up, you sort of end up with a scale anyway, in most cases. You might get one note that's, you know, a bit of a, ooh, a void note. But if you start thinking in intervals, um, that'll really open up doors as well. So, over the A minor, so we've done. Then we're going to C, and we're going to stay in the same place. So from the root note, C is there. So you got your root, flat third. Fifth, flat seven, root, flat three, five, flat seven, root. And if you don't already think in intervals and chord tones, say the notes as you're going along. It's really, really useful because with it's not just mindless theory. With um, the title of these of these chord tones comes a sound against the root note. So if you say um, the fifth. That has a sound against. And if you say the flat three, that has a more more important quality than the fifth or flat seven. So, first two. So you got. And then into the C. So instantly you can hear that change. Yeah. So then we're going to E flat, flat minor seven, same thing. And same again, so root, flat three, fifth, flat seven, root, flat three, fifth, flat seven. And if you want to get the, the ninth in, And then when you get these ones that are A rooted, always go below the root note as well, so you don't end up getting lost about what's underneath here. So from there, flat seven there, and then the fifth. So we've got. Yeah, so 
I can already hear those changes. And then for the F sharp, I'm gonna go here. So the little finger. So root, flat three, five, flat seven, root, flat three, five. So again, all these notes are still in the same place. And then from there, flat seven, fifth. And you can go down to the third as well if you want that. So if I just play those next to each other. one. So that's just using chord tones. So obviously then you, you play your arpeggio and then play the scale after it and you'll probably find that if you've gone up to the ninth or, or maybe the eleventh then there's only really one note left um, in terms of the scale. So if you, th if you think in chord tones then the scale sort of, they don't disappear but they only become a scale when they played as a scale. I only see a scale in hours when it's played like that because the temptation is to go right I'm going to play A Dorian, C Dorian, E flat Dorian, F sharp Dorian and then you're thinking in scales so you're thinking like bah, bah, bah. you're thinking these big chunks and there's not enough time when you're improvising to do that so what you then do is after you've done all that is then maybe bring the, the gates in even more so there, you maybe just use the D and the G string and then work on those notes and see which notes change. So for the A, that'll be the change to the C. So these two are in both chords. Then you go to there. So, lock off an area, you can just do it with two chords, there's no shame in just going between two chords and just resolving, or maybe just aim for the thirds or aim for a note, so say right I'm going to start on the third, and then aim for the third on the change. So that's a very, very basic sort of introduction into getting between chord changes. I'll probably do a follow up on a different progression, but um, let us know what you think of that so far and then... Uh, Hope that's helpful.